Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new step sequencer in Logic Pro 10.5 to control different synth parameters within Alchemy, particularly controlling the XY pad in Alchemy, or the transform pad, as it's called. So here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. Uh, the drums are just loops. Pay attention to the bass. So I'm using the step sequencer to trigger a bass line, just trigger the notes using a melodic row, but I'm also using some step automation rows to control the transform pads x-axis as well as the y-axis. So real quick, before we get into this, if you are interested in diving a lot deeper into the step sequencer, I actually did a full like 20 part course over at macprovideo.com on the step sequencer. So if you want to learn more about the basics through all of the advanced features, go check that out as well. So let me just delete these uh, transform pad rows. Just command delete in the uh, step sequencer will delete a row. And the bass line's just a few different notes hovering around A, it's an A minor. Um, and then I've got the gate parameter pulled down a bit to give it more of a shorter sound. So that's one little trick you can do. You can shorten this gate sub row here to make, make each of the notes a bit shorter. Um, but to add the automation in um, can get kind of complex. If you click here and you go to automation, there's a bunch of different automation controls you can add. Uh, and if you go to alchemy, there's even more here you can add. And searching for these can kind of be a pain. But what you can do instead is just pull up alchemy. I'll put it in 75% view here just to kind of make it a little smaller and what you do is you turn on this learn mode or press option command l now what this does is any parameter you touch with your mouse in the any synthesizer or uh audio effects plugin on that track as well will be learned as an automation row down here so if i move this around you'll see that the transform pad x and transform pad y are both uh added and this will go for any parameter in any synthesizer. So those, this is not just an alchemy specific thing. I'm just choosing to use alchemy for this. So I'm gonna turn off learn mode. The th one of the things you gotta be aware of with these automation sub rows, uh, these automation rows is that they have sub rows. So if you click here, it'll show its sub row. So the automation row itself just turns on automation for that row but then you have to go in and you have to adjust the, the actual automation value for that row. And you can click and swipe. You can adjust these one by one. Um, another thing you can do is you can click right here and drag up or down to control all of the parameters together. Um, you can also right click and clear your automation values. And you can also right click and randomize your automation values. So let's randomize these a bit. That one doesn't look too random. Yeah, it look, looks a bit more random. And uh, let's see what this uh, sounds like. So I find this incredibly helpful because before the step sequencer you technically could do this on a step-by-step -step basis. It was just really difficult to do. You'd have to use region automation to, uh, to do this. And it just, it was a pain. It was really difficult to do. Using the step sequencer, adding in automation parameters on a step-by-step -step basis is really easy and it's really tight. Um, so it's, you know, you're not going to end up with and by tight, I don't mean cool. I mean, like, you don't want your automation drifting before or after. When you add an automation value to a step, it's just applying that to that step and nothing else. So it's really cool what you can do with this. Let's go a step further. Let me go into the advanced view here. And let me play around with my filter here. It's a low pass filter. And it looks like there's already some modulation on this with an envelope, uh, with a couple other controls. But let's add this cutoff as another automation row. Um, so let me just set this back to 75%. I'll click here, click learn. 
and then just touch and move that with your mouse and it learns it. Here it is, filter one cutoff. Once again, you have to turn on automation for all those steps. First, let me turn off learn mode and then let me randomize that as well. And you don't have to randomize, I'm just using randomization for uh, just to kind of quickly get a result here. Uh, I don't want any of these really low ones because they're too low, it's gonna cut out all of the signal. So pretty much every parameter in any synthesizer, whether it be a stock logic plugin, a stock logic instrument, or a third party instrument can be automated with the step sequencer. Uh, let's take this one step further. Let's do a couple more. Let me go to learn mode. Let's learn resonance and let's learn drive on the filter up here. Um, so you can really go crazy with this. Resonance, you gotta be careful with. You can get some nasty squealy sounds in there if you do too much with it. I'm gonna pull these down a bit. I don't want these ones way, way up there. Yeah, we may be doing, you know, a little bit too much now. There's, you know, there's such there's a su such thing as too much modulation. Let me just pull all of the drives down just so they're kind of lower values. Same thing with the resonance. There we go. I think that's a, probably going to be a little more, a little bit more tame. Yeah, so that's how it's done. Um, go ham with it, you know? Uh, there's no excuse now to not fully integrate all of your synthesizer parameters into your composition. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.